is up. Hope you all are doing fine during this pandemic situation. Today we'll be unboxing the Moza iFocus kit and I'll be showing you guys how to install it to your camera rig and also be showing you guys how to use all its amazing and intelligent uh, features. I'll be taking the help of my two assistants here uh, to show you how to rack focus using the hand unit and also using the intelligence guidance system. First of all, I would like to apologize for the setting I am in. I'm crashing at a friend's place here at Dubai just for a day or two before I fly back. Tried my best to make the frame look better, but I didn't do a good job, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, let's do the unboxing. Here is the Goodsense Moza Eye Focus Kit. I call it a kit because it has both the wireless follow focus motor and the wireless hand unit in the box. They are also sold separately. All right then, let's get it out of the box. I did a small research about all the follow focus motors that are available in the market and finally decided to go with this because of the price factor and its features which I'll be talking about later. It has a nice fancy case and that is pretty much it. Looks pretty sturdy and it's got a handle to carry around. Let's see what is inside the case. Wow, nice. It's housed well protected using the foam. Here is the wireless follow focus motor. Here are the antennas and this is the holder to rig it to your camera using the 15mm rod. Moza claims that the wireless follow focus motor weighs only 198 grams and the inbuilt battery can last up to 24 hours. This is the wireless hand unit. It has a dial and a display. Here is the wheel to control the focus and it can be fixed onto a 15mm rod. Here is the antenna. It is made of metal and feels sturdy. This is the clamp to fix the wireless hand unit onto a 15mm rod. The gear ring that should be fastened around the focusing ring of your lens. This is the remote cable that can be used to connect the motor to a Moza gimbal. They've given us a USB-C to USB cable. It can be used to charge the follow focus motor and the hand unit. They've given us two user manuals. One for the hand unit and one for the follow focus motor. I'll leave a link in the description below for both the online PDF files. That is all we have in the box. Now let me show you how to install it and get started. Welcome to a better environment. I'm going to use my Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2 4.6K to show you guys how to install the Moza iFocus system. I have already charged both the units for this video. To be able to fix the iFocus motor to the camera, you'll need a 15mm rod. I picked up a set of small rig 15mm rods. These are the carbon fiber ones by small rig. I chose them over the metal ones to keep my rig light and for durability. The carbon fiber rods can be mounted onto a shoulder plate. And I also picked up a small rig quick release plate to mount the shoulder plate onto the tripod. This is a VCT14 shoulder plate by small rig.
There are 15 mm rod slots at the front and at the back of the shoulder plate. You can fasten the rods using the knobs provided in each slot. I have already screwed in the sliding plate to the bottom of the camera. Now you can slide in the camera from the back like this. And then to make sure it stays in place, you can tighten the knob on the other side. Now you can start installing the iFocus system by first fixing the gear ring onto the focusing ring. It has to be tight enough that it won't slip when the motor controls it. Now we can mount the iFocus motor to the 15mm rod and tighten the knob so that it stays nice and snug with the focusing ring. Let's pair the hand unit with the iFocus motor. First, the iFocus motor must be switched off if it is on. Next, the hand unit must be turned on. Go into the menu interface by tapping the power button. Select wireless and then select pair. Then the iFocus motor should be turned on. The pairing happens automatically. Then the hand unit screen displays pair OK. Next, the motor's direction needs to be set. From the menu interface, select motor. Then select CM for clockwise motion. OK is displayed on the screen. Then we calibrate the motor by going into function. Then selecting motor calibration. The motor can be calibrated by remote or by hand. I'm going to calibrate using the remote because it looks cool. Then we just follow the instructions on the screen. It says press up, turn to the starting position and click right One, two, to confirm. Back, 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 the focusing back, back, ring moves towards the starting position while the up button is held down. Once it reaches the starting position, click the right side of the dial. Then it says press down, turn to the end position, click the right to confirm. You can see the focusing ring moving towards the end position. Finally, upon pressing the right key, the focusing ring goes back to the start position. Then the screen says manual remote calibration succeeded. And now you can control the focusing ring wirelessly using the hand unit. It is as simple as that. My assistants are here to help us understand the functions of the iFocus system better. Here is how to set point A and B. Setting A and B helps to rack focus with precision during the shoot every single time. Just turn the wheel to focus the desired point A. Then hold down the mark button at the top of the dial. While holding down the mark button, turn the wheel to point B and let go of the mark button. Now when the wheel is turned, it will exactly stop at point A and not turn any further. Point A, that's point A. Now when we turn that wheel back again, it will click and stop exactly at point B. And our teddy is point B and right now it is in focus. Now to delete the point A and B, all you have to do is hold down the delete button at the bottom of the dial and it's deleted. When it is necessary to shoot a scene repeatedly, you can use action recording mode to record the next focusing process, which can automatically cycle shooting. The intelligence guidance feature is the show stopper. You can start recording by long pressing the record button that is the left side of the dial and the number starts blinking and you can rotate the dial and select the number. I'm leaving it at 1. There are 2 and 3. Next you have to double tap the record button and it starts recording your moves. 
first I'm pulling it out of focus and then I'm pulling focus to the remote and then next to point A and then to point B and finally back to the remote quickly now you have to just double press the record button and it stops recording your data is now stored in one to start playing your sequence you need to make sure that one is there next to the play icon you have to long press the play button which is the right side of the dial when it blinks use the dial to select the number i'm going to leave it at one and then you just double press the button and your sequence starts playing first it goes out of focus as we did it earlier and the focus comes back to the remote then it goes to point A you can see the focus ring moving automatically now it's gone to point B and then quickly back to the remote I hope it was informative thanks for watching and see you in the next one